and welcome on the live stream this morning. It's good to be here and uh, yeah, I feel good. I feel good. I'm pleased to be here this morning. First of all, I will uh, take the opportunity to thank everybody for their prayers. Those here and those watching who've been praying for me after I have my appendix out and I'm well. I'm good and I'm moving forward. But I felt the comfort of knowing the church was praying for me and I made sure that the surgeon knew that the church was praying for me also and uh, there was uh, a lot of wonderful opportunities whilst there. I wasn't really so concerned about what was really going on. I just, uh, there was so much to be gained in that moment and it was good. So God's been good. So be encouraged. Your prayers have been answered and, uh, and I'm just pleased to be here today. So praise God. So today we're going to be talking about the condition of the heart. Condition of the heart. Oh, here we go. Can you see me? <laughs> oh, good, good. The condition of the heart. So we're going to turn first to Jeremiah, chapter 17. And we're just going to read verse 9 and verse 10. Turn with me at home as well, or wherever you are watching the live stream from. You may even be at work. Wherever you are. And it says this. It says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Nice encouraging verse starts off this morning. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because sometimes we don't think about the heart like that. And the truth is, the heart is deceitful, the Bible tells us so. We'll look at why that is. Well, we, you know, for those of us who know the Word of God, we, we know that sin entered the world through Adam and Eve. So that temptation, that fall of mankind, it wasn't the apple itself, it, it was their hearts. And they took their eyes off God and they listened to the devil. And that was how sin entered the world. And you know, sin, believe it or not, is everywhere. Now I'm not going to stay on that for long because the more you think of that, the more depressing it sounds. But it is, it's a fact. And everywhere we look, and, and everyone we're attached to, in some way, shape or form, big or small, there is sin. And it's in the world. It was there before we were all born. But as humans, we become conditioned to that sin. It's almost like an inheritance. We, we, we all were born into that. That's how it is. Proverbs 4, 23 says this. It says, above all else, so it's, this is imperative, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Let me read that again. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. It's quite a crucial piece of scripture, I think. Everything you do flows from the heart. So it's important that we do guard our heart because, as I've said, we're in a world of sin and it's easy to be a part of that. The Bible says in the world but don't be of the world. You know sometimes we, we can't help but ooh, see something or listen to something and it's just there and we don't mean to find it but it finds us sometimes and we have to ask the Lord to guard our hearts because the Lord can. We can't do it in our own strength. It's a supernatural thing to be able to have our hearts guarded. So be encouraged by that. We're not been left alone to deal with the sin. We know that. We believe that. And we can receive that this morning. We're going to turn to Matthew, which is our main reading today. Matthew chapter 15. For those of you who've got Bibles. I'm going to read from verse 8 particularly. The context 
is Jesus is with his disciples and he's challenged by the Pharisees who are always trying to trip him up in one way or the other about the disciples not washing their hands and Jesus counter challenges them on their own traditions which contradict and contradicted the law of God. And then he fulfilled a prophecy, a prophecy of Isaiah in verse 8. It says this, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teach you as doctrines the commandments of men. And then it goes on, it says, When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand, not what goes into the mouth of the father's a man, but what comes out of the mouth of the father's a man. <coughs> then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? I don't honestly think that Jesus was so worried that he offended. That wasn't his intention to offend, to convict, but it, the fact of the matter, it offended him because it pierced them. They, they knew really what he was saying. They knew it was for them. And then he says in verse 13, it says, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. But Jesus said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart see evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Okay, so there we are. So verse 8, where we picked it out. I'm just going to read that small part again. It says, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines of commandments of men. Now this clearly is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees. It's for the Pharisees. My question is, can we identify this at all? I can identify to it. I can only speak for myself. Because there are moments when I maybe I've stood there and I've, I've worshipped the Lord and I've sung words, sometimes not always knowing what it meant. Sometimes singing something and I could say, I'm sold out for you. I submit everything to you, but deep in my heart there are still things reserved, things I've put to one side in their own corner, hidden my transparency this morning. I want you to know that. I trust in the Lord. He helped me get past that. And he does. But I have to challenge myself with that. I have to. I'm not in, under condemnation. But I must challenge myself. And so I ask the question. Here's a scale. I'm going to go from right to left. If you're looking at me. Here's Jesus. And on this scale is our heart, somewhere on this scale, in the middle of that. And some of us we might say, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm with the Lord, I'm close to Jesus in my heart. That's great, be honest about it, we will glory in that, praise God for that. That's a good thing. But you, being honest with yourself, you might say, well, actually, I'm somewhere, somewhere in the middle. Sometimes I'm here, I'm there. I'm you know, day by day, it feels like it changes. One minute I'm here, I'm feeling great, and next something happens and I feel, let the Lord down. Or sometimes we're just here. Maybe that's where some people are this morning, or on the live stream. Be honest with yourself. 
It said in Jeremiah, didn't it? The Lord searches the heart. He knows our hearts. Let's be real with God this morning. Let's be real with him because he knows our hearts. And if we are somewhere on that part of the scale, at least we've identified it. We can then say, right, well, this is what we need to do. Lord, help me to become close to you in heart. Still praising with your lips, but make sure your heart is in check when you do it. Make sure that as you're doing these things, especially if I'm preaching these things, I'm putting them into practice. Practice what you preach. Let's go out there and, and do these things to love one another, be kind to one another. Let's not talk about it, let's do it. It's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Verse 17 to 19, I'll just read that. It says, Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed, and so on. We've heard it before, but it's interesting, isn't it? The condition of my heart doesn't just affect me, it affects those around me. And I have to personally understand the weight of that, what that means. It's not just about me anymore. And I don't say that with a, with a heavy heart, I just say it because it's the truth. And I must be aware of that. I must make sure my own heart's in check. I can't give what I haven't got, so I must make sure that my heart's in it doesn't mean, and I must stress this, it doesn't mean that we're, we're perfect, no way near. But it means we're striving to be better every day, to win people for the Lord, to do His good work, which He started and that we should continue to do. It's a matter of the heart. You know, as I went into hospital a couple of weeks ago now, as I said before, I wasn't going in too much thinking about, you know, the matter at hand as it were. It was obvious that it was going to happen, but it within me, I, I didn't feel like oh, I'm on fire for Jesus this morning. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say on the scale I was there. Put it into a picture. Somewhere on the scale, I don't think I was there. But I can testify this, that the Lord still wants to use me. And did use me, not for my glory, but for his glory and for the good of those around me. And it was good. There was opportunity. I'm not sure the, the surgeons have heard the scripture just before they put someone under, but they did this time. <laughs> and they had to hear it afterwards as well. I had to make sure that I, you know, they hadn't done anything else. They tried to open up to take the brain, they realised there wasn't one in there. So there was <laughs> But it was good. And they heard that. You sow the seed. Someone else waters, and God will give the increase. And there was other opportunities to, to pray with people who, who were in much worse states than I was physically, that's for sure. But they needed the prayer. And they received the prayer. Hallelujah. It was good. They received it. And that was that. And that was what it was about. And I did, as I said, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was on fire. No. It wasn't when I left <laughs> for those few hours after, but I felt good about that because it, it made a difference. It's making a difference this morning. But we can know that even in those moments where we feel weak and we feel like we're not, as I said once before, hitting the mark. But if we're not there, God will still use us. How much more, I question myself, how much more could the Lord use me if I'm there with the Lord? Getting close, if I'm communing with him. Getting really close to It's interesting, isn't it? But it's good to challenge yourself with these things. How much more could the Lord use me? How much more boldness could the Lord have given me in those moments? The only way to find out is to put it into practice. I, I believe that. Turn with me to Luke, chapter 6, please. 
Luke chapter 6, verse 25. The condition of the heart. Chapter 6, verse 25. It says this. A good man, out of the good treasure, of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Wow. That's uh, quite powerful, isn't it? That's Jesus speaking again in the book of Luke. It's not about our physical parts this morning. I trust that they're in good check. But it's not about our physical parts. It's about the heart that God has given us as Christians to serve and to love, to do good in the world, to make that difference. It's not about my physical heart because my physical heart is good for today. But the heart that God has given me is eternal life. It bears fruit and riches for me. Again, for those around me, that's the heart. That's where it's at. That of my heart could produce good fruit or bad fruit. It's as simple as that. You can have one or the other. The truth is, I've seen both in my life at times. And perhaps we can all just be honest with ourselves. Yeah, I've there's been a bit of both. That's fine. That's fine. Galatians. In linking with that, I'm just going to turn to Galatians. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 19 to 22. The pastor spoke on the fruits of the Spirit briefly as he was talking about love a couple of weeks ago. You will have heard this recently, it's, a, it's wonderful. But the first, the bit just before that is, is also interesting, it's also important, particularly for today's message that we read this. We've heard a bit of this already. The scripture is very consistent. It says this from verse 19 it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery. Hatred, contentions, heresies, evil murder, uh, envy even, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those things, those that practice such things, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. But, Verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh, flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So we now know what bad fruit is, we know what good fruit is. The Bible tells us what can be produced from this. Out of what? Out of the heart. But let's focus more on the good fruit. Some of the good fruit. We know what the bad fruit is. The scripture tells us. Let that just be a, you know, a word of, should I say, warning? I don't know. But just a, a thought. I think I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. But what I do want is these other nine wonderful things. Fruits of the spirit. How do we, how do we attain those? And how do we live with those in our hearts? It says here in verse. 25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let's also walk in the Spirit. We need, believe it or not, we need the Holy Spirit to walk 
in the Spirit. It's the truth. We need the Holy Spirit to come and fill us. And if you're unsure, you know, I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning, if anyone listening to me, so I don't assume that everyone knows the scripture this morning. That's absolutely fine. You're more than welcome this morning. So I'll say this, that Jesus said, when I go, I will send someone, another helper, someone to help and comfort. He says, my peace I leave, with my peace I give to you. So he's left with us the gift of peace. Left with us the Holy Spirit to help us every single day. That we may have that fruit of the Spirit evident in our lives. To bless those around us. There might be certain fruits in there you can pull up. I don't know about that. That self-control, that patience. Those are often the two that, that jump out to people. Oh, I need a bit more of that. Well, if that's the case, let's pray. The Lord gives us more of that. As Pastor said a couple of weeks ago, it starts with one thing. It does start with love. Start with love. It comes out of the heart. The abundance of the heart, the Bible says. We don't have a little bit of it, but we have lots of it and more left over. It's a good thing to ask the Lord for these things, because we need them in our lives, but we can't do it in our own shape. We need the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives glory to Jesus, and Jesus gave glory to the Father. So with the Holy Spirit within us, we give glory to who? To Jesus. He helps us every day. Not giving glory just with our mouths, but with our actions. That's where it's at, with our actions. Praise God. We need the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I reference this song. Now, for those of you who know me quite well, <laughs> sometimes I might put out the redemption hymnal. <laughs> Nice old golden old ears there, full sometimes. And, but I also like some old uh, contemporary songs as well. <laughs> and uh, I like uh, Nat King Cole, some old 50s, 60s classics, you know. I won't say sing if you know the words, it's alright. <laughs> There's a particular song, and, and he says these, the two verses that jump out to me. I quite like them to, to my faith, I think it's true. He says, When I fall in love, it will be forever, or I'll never fall in love. And we know what he's talking about when he sings that, but think about that. Fall in love will be forever. Hallelujah. Or I'll never fall in love. The next verse, more poignant, says this. It says, when I give my heart, it will be completely, <laughs> or I'll never Give my heart. Are you ready to give your heart to Jesus? Not just a, a small part of your heart, but everything you have. Give it to Jesus. In Jesus' name. Give it to Jesus. Not a small part, but everything. Give your heart to Jesus. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, particularly as I look at the screen ahead of me, give your heart to Jesus. Not just a little bit. Everything you've got. Why? Because he gave everything for you. And he gave everything for us. Hallelujah. Everything he had, he gave to us. He left it at the cross. For our sins, for our failures. For everything we did wrong. And that's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. And he rose again so that we would be justified in that. That's what the Bible tells us in Romans 5. Read that for yourself. It's a wonderful scripture. I read it recently. It did me good. Psalm 51. I'm coming to a close. Psalm 51. Verse 9, 13. Um. It takes me just as long to find the scriptures as everyone else. There you go. <laughs> so, Psalm 51, verse 9 to 13. Now, I read verse 12, I read a couple of preachers back. 
lovely verse, but there's a little bit more I've seen since then. I wanted to share. It says this. This is David, just to bring the context. It may start at the top of where Psalm 51 is in your Bibles, but he fell. He fell. A man after God's own heart. But he says this in verse 9. He says, Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast away from your pre- do not cast me away from your presence. And here's a good one. And do not take away, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore, here it is, restore to me the joy of your salvation. And uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. Can anyone see a parallel? The condition of my heart doesn't just affect me. It affects those around me. Verse 13. And then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you. Lord, help me. Give me a clean heart. So that then I can go out and do your work. Many people for Jesus. That really blessed me as I read that. I don't think I read around it much before. I just read the tip of the scripture that was given to me. As I read around it, I thought, wow, that's good. That's really, really good. Praise God for that. Because it's only by His grace. It's only by His grace. Pray for me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Receive it this morning. Receive it this morning. The condition of our hearts is important to God. Know that this morning. He wants us to know the fullness of His grace. Don't be downcast in your heart this morning. Rejoice in your heart this morning. Whatever your situation is this morning, rejoice in your heart. He's not forgotten about you. And your heart is of the most importance to him. So let's get right with the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Not just with our mouths, but with our hearts, with our actions. Giving thanks to the Lord. I'll close in prayer. Father, we give you the praise. Honour, congratulation this morning. We worship you in our hearts for all that you've done for us. Lord, we just thank you because you know our hearts. You didn't come to condemn the world but to save it. Wow, what a God. We just thank you for the truth this morning that we're not alone. We do have the Holy Spirit should we receive it, receive Him. And Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Fill us in you this morning. Help us, O oh Lord, to honour you with our hearts, to bless those around us from the good treasure of our hearts. You've put in us the fruits of the Spirit, O oh Lord. Put them in us. And if there's anything within us, as we're honest with ourselves this morning, as we're transparent with you this morning, give us and create in us a new heart. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, help us to reach out to you, not to be cold and hard of heart, no, but to soften our hearts, Lord, that we would reach out to you and say, Lord, help me to receive that clean heart, to worship you with all my heart, to give you all my heart, completely, oh Lord. You are a good God, you deserve every bit of glory. We thank you, Lord, and ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you all, and God bless you on the live stream this morning. Have a good week.